Organizing the world into quintiles is a standard way for economic sociologists to visualize and track stratification in a society. Now remember that in studies of inequality, strata are social structures consisting of layers, one on top of another, with the idea that those on top have more resources, more control, more power. Those on the bottom have fewer resources, fewer uh, amounts of control, less power. How do we think about layers? We think about layers in terms of quintiles. And a quintile is nothing more than an ordered fifth of a population. You put a population, a set of people, into order from highest to lowest, and then you divide them into fifths, units of 20% of the population. That's all a quintile is. And this is just one of three definitions you'll need to know in order to understand what's going on in this video. How do you create quintiles? Well, to do that, let's think of a hypothetical world. One in which there are just 10 people. Why? Because that's just about all I can fit into this space. Al, Betty, Clem, Dan, L, Frank, then there's Gus, Helen, Inez, and Jess. And all of these individuals, uh, let's say, live on a desert island. They're isolated, and each of them has a certain amount of resources. Let's call them dollars. And Al would have $70 at his disposal. That would be $70 in wealth, $70 that he owns. Betty, on the other hand, has $330 of wealth. Clem has only $10. Helen is somewhere in between with $150. So if you add up all of these values, by the way, you'll find that the total wealth in this population on a desert island equals $1,000. Now, this is just a group of people right now. It's just an aggregation. How do we create quintiles? Well, remember what a quintile is. A quintile is an ordered fifth of a population. So the first thing we need to do to get a quintile set is to put these people in order from highest to lowest. Well, who has the most? Well, there's Betty. Clem is really down on the bottom. Frank is up high, too. And then who comes next? Betty and Frank. I think Gus and Helen come next after them. Then comes, well, Dan is down on the bottom. Al is up pretty high. And then L. And then finally, let's see, I think... Inez and Jess are here. All right, let's, let's fit these all in. I think they're all in order, all right? If we take a kind of meandering path down, highest over here, and then highest and heading down in order, from highest to lowest. Now, you'll notice that from top to bottom, all of these individuals are organized into fifths, ordered fifths. We have our quintiles. And these quintiles have names. The one on top is called the top quintile. What could be easier? The one on bottom is called the bottom quintile. What could be easier? The one in the middle is called the middle quintile. The second one from the top is most often called the second quintile. 
The fourth from the top is most often called the fourth quintile. Now, sometimes people will rank these from the bottom. So you'll hear of sometimes the second quintile called the second quintile from the bottom and the fourth quintile from the bottom. It doesn't really matter whether you count from the bottom up or the top down. You still have five quintiles. You just need to keep track of what you're doing, counting from the top or the bottom. And now we have our quintiles. Uh, what can we do? What can we do with these quintiles? We can say certain things about these quintiles. We can say, for instance, of the top quintile, we can have a discussion regarding just how much money is in that top quintile. Uh, for example, we can say that the top quintile has $530 of the $1,000. Another way to put that is to say that we have 53% of all the wealth held in the top quintile. We could say that the next quintile has uh, $250 in it of the $1,000 or 25%. The, the middle quintile or the third has $120 or 12%. The fourth quintile from the top has $70 or 7%. And the one on the bottom, Clem and Dan, has $30 total or just 3% of 1,000. We can also talk about the average wealth of the top quintile. The average wealth of the top quintile is uh, 200 plus 330, which equals $530 divided by two. That average wealth is um, therefore $265. The average wealth of the second quintile is 150 plus 100 dollars for Helen and Gus. That's 250 dollars divided by two. The average wealth here is 125 dollars. The average wealth here is 60 dollars. The average wealth here, 35 dollars. The average wealth here, 15 dollars. So, if you have quintiles, you should be able to talk about the percent share of all wealth held by each quintile, and you should be able to talk about the average or mean wealth held by each quintile. But we can do more than that. We can compare these quintiles here in this actual desert island to some possible quintiles that could exist. Now, I'm going to use a term. I'm going to use the term perfect. By perfect, I don't mean a situation that I would like to see necessarily, normatively speaking. But instead, I mean a situation that could not be any more equal. Perfect equality means as equal as you can get. In that situation, one of perfect equality... Everybody has the same wealth. If total wealth remains at $1,000, everybody finds that the wealth is distributed equally. $100 per person. Now, it's kind of arbitrary who you put in which quintile here, because these are ordered, but mm, the order is irrelevant because everyone's wealth in this situation is the same. It couldn't be more equal. It's perfect equality. The share of the total wealth, $1,000, is the same for each quintile. What is this? It is $200. For Betty and Al, at the top quintile, we might say, we could call it arbitrarily, well, that's 20%, right? $200 is 20% of 1,000. Another 20%, another 20%, another 20%, another 20%. Uh, what's interesting is that each quintile, right, is a fifth. A fifth is 20%. And each quintile has 20% of the wealth. 20% of the people, 20% of the wealth, right? That's 
what perfect equality looks like. In a situation of perfect equality, we can begin to say some things about measures of what's typical. And to do that, we'll introduce two ideas. One you should be familiar with. The mean, the numerical average, is simply the sum of the values of the observations, all these $100, divided by the number of observations themselves. So if we add up all the values of the observations, 100 plus 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 100, that equals $1,000, divide by 10, and you get an average of $100. The median is different. The median is the one in the middle. It's the value for which half of the observations are above and half below. Well, if we go from the top on down, here's a situation. Half are above, half are below. Below what? $100. So the median here, in a situation of perfect equality, is $100. And the mean is $100. That's a situation of perfect equality. Well, there's another perfect situation that we could have. in which the total wealth is also $1,000, and that is perfect inequality, in which all the money is concentrated as much as it can be. And here we have Betty. Betty is on top, and she has $1,000. Everybody else has none. How you organize everybody else is, again, somewhat arbitrary because there's really no ordering beyond one person who has everything and everybody else who has none. But you have quintiles, and you could talk about what happens in the quintiles. In the top quintile here, what is the sum total of the wealth? Well, $1,000. In the top quintile here, the top quintile has 100% of all the wealth, and all the other quintiles have 0% of the wealth. The average wealth here is $500. The average wealth here is all the other quintiles, $0. And in a situation of perfect inequality, you'll notice that the total wealth is still $1,000, that the mean wealth is still $100, but the median wealth, that in between, well, the one in between everybody else, where half are above and half are below, that's zero dollars. So really, the difference between median wealth and mean wealth in the situation of perfect equality, they're the same. In perfect inequality, the median and the mean are very different. We head back to our messy reality our messy reality, one in which the bottom quintile does not have nothing, but the bottom quintile is also not in a situation of equality with the top quintile. Well, what does it look like there? We still have a situation where the total wealth is a thousand. We still have a situation where the average wealth, the mean wealth, is still a hundred. But what is the median? Uh, the value for which half are above and half below. Well, half are above L and L, half are below L and L. And so that typical point for which half of of, of all observations are, are, are above and half are below, is kind of at the $60 point here, right? This is the $60, $60 average, and half of observations are above, half are below. We would say the median here is $60.
you take the average of the two that are tied for being in the middle. So that is a situation where the median and the mean are not as far apart as they could be under a situation of perfect inequality, but they're not as close as they could be under a situation of perfect equality. You can judge reality by which it is closer to, the situation of perfect equality or perfect inequality.